Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome to the water bucket class. This is a water filter system that we've been training all of our people in that'll do standard water filtration, but it also does radiation filtration. Uh, what we did in the last video, we showed you the uh, GEG water filter kit, and we're going to take that out and demo it. And then we showed you the GEG uh, radiation removal water filter kit. And what this requires is two five gallon buckets that you can get at any hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, believe it or not, you get them in the paint department. Uh, these are food grade, heavy duty, BPA free buckets. So you will need two buckets, you'll need two lids. And what you're going to do is you're going to drill one hole in the bottom of one bucket and you're gonna drill a hole in the front at the lower end of the second bucket. Now, all of this is detailed in the instructions. When you get your water filter kit, you're gonna open it up, and what you should have is one spigot with the rubber gaskets. You're going to have one water filter with the cover. Okay, this is a pre-filter, so it keeps a lot of garbage out of your regular filter and it's just simply held on by a regular rubber band, and it's washable, maintainable. Remember we talked about this, this filter can be maintained with a soft bristle brush, and you'll double the life on it. It's, it's guaranteed for like 12,000 gallons, but you can easily double that if you maintain it. And then it comes with the instruction sheet, which will give you all of the details on where to drill the holes, what the dimensions are. If you're handy with tools at all, uh, it's really simple. There's nothing to it. Uh, one thing I will recommend, um, I use spade drills to drill this, not a regular drill. I find they cut a little sharper and cleaner hole. And then the second filter system, this is the big mama here. This is the one that takes the radiation out. Okay, and then I'll show you how that works. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how, once you have your hole in there, you set up your dispenser valve. It simply goes right in the front. We're going to put the second washer on the inside. And then you simply tighten it down from the inside. And then you want that two inches above the bottom, so when you set it on a table, it's not going to hit and break your uh, dispenser valve. Here's a tip. You can buy spares of these on Amazon. You can get them, I think, a four or five pack for 10 or 12 bucks. They're real cheap. So you know something like this can break quite easily. I went on Amazon and I think I ordered a half a dozen of them. It comes with the valves and the, uh, the gaskets and the nut on the inside so that you have an extra one because it is fragile, you drop it, you could snap it off. Okay, you all know that in an emergency you're gonna make a mistake and so have spares, always have extras. So that's how the bottom part looks. Then the top part, you've just got a simple hole in the bottom and then inside of here, I also have some tubing and I'll explain what happens with that. But on the main water filter, this goes in the top of the inside of the bucket, you've got two silicone washers. You're going to place that through the hole, put the washer, and then you're going to tighten down the nut that holds the main filter on the inside. Okay, now another recommendation I will make is get yourself a tube of food grade silicone, which will help to seal these a little better. Sometimes these uh, washers don't quite seal as well. So if you put a little silicone on it, tighten it down, you'll get a much better seal. So that's what that looks like on the inside. And that's what it looks like on the bottom. So now what is going to happen with this tubing, they make a recommendation for this, this tubing, goes inside of here on the bottom of the main filter. And that, if you're just using 
the main filter by itself for just filtering, filtering water, not radioactive. That helps when you put that on top of the bucket with the hole um, to drain better and it does a better job of filling. So that explains that inside the instructions. This is a just, I think, 5 16 uh, clear tubing, which you can get at any hardware store. Um, it's real expensive. Six feet of it cost me, I think, $1.89. So yeah, get a big chunk and that way you can have extras. Okay, here is the trickier part. On one lid, you need to cut a hole a little bit larger than the diameter of the radiation filter so that it will go through easily. What I did here is I just took my spade drill, punched a hole in, and then I, I had a circle drawn, the diameter that I wanted roughly, and I used a saber saw to cut the hole on the inside and then just filed it down a little bit so that you have a hole roughly three inches in diameter, which is fine. So what's gonna happen with that is you're gonna set that on top of the dispenser bucket. This is the fill bucket. You'll have this tubing in if you're just using the one filter, but if you're gonna use the radiation filter, it's gonna go through that hole. So you'll have the other lid, okay? That's just a cover to keep the bugs and anything else from going down inside of there. So if you wanna set it up for the radiation filter, then what you're gonna do, this will screw right onto the bottom of the other filter system. It's, it's pretty simple. Okay, and then that whole unit will drop right down into there. With this, you do not need the tubing. With this, you just set that up and set that down in there, fill it with water, and that's going to filter through the main filter and then through this one here to help remove the radiation. Now, full disclosure on this. This is designed by a company that has tested these for quality assurance. When you're handling anything that has to do with radiation, that gets a little tricky. I would highly recommend you do some serious research and studying. These bucket systems are very inexpensive to produce. This is not a high-end system. This is something that'll get you through in a pinch, okay? Uh, if you want to learn more about filtration of radiation, I'm gonna recommend, I've watched the video twice now, Mike Adams on the Health Ranger Report did an in-depth study of filtration of cesium-134, and I think they did 137, but the isotopes is basically the same deal. And they tested all the different water filters on the market of what will actually filter out uh, the bulk of that radiation. And they came up with six water filters, and I'm not gonna give you the, the, the high notes of this, but go on there and watch it. Go to the Health Ranger Report, look at Mike Adams' um, whole layout of what they did. He explains their lab, how it works, and how they tested these filters to make sure they filter out at least 99% of the cesium. Now, their top six filters, the lowest rated one filtered out like 99.98. It was unbelievable. Um, and the top one, the top two filtered out uh, a full 100% uh, rounded up according to his dissertation um, of getting out that much cesium. So uh, one of the things I will recommend, and you'll see this in his presentation, is get yourself a zero water water pitcher. I've just ordered a couple of these. Uh, I'm gonna do some training on it for my group and put out some videos on that and explain how these work. This can actually be used as a pre-filter system before you go into uh, the zero water, which will help. But again, uh, we've got to do some more uh, research and studying on what it really takes to handle radio radioactive water, okay? Because this is dangerous stuff. Um, they did some studies um, after the Fukushima event up at Cal State Berkeley and uh, the University of Berkeley put buckets up on the roof and it rained. And of course, right after the Fukushima event, there was a lot of radiation in the water and went into the air. And that water was contaminated with enough radiation that it was unsafe to drink the rainwater. But they merely let it sit out for a while. And within a couple of three days, I believe, the radiation dissipated. So this is something you have to understand about prior or prior to an event, you have to understand what radiation does and doesn't do. After the event, 
you can be in an environment that has had a detonation within about 72 hours on a clean bomb. It's not a big deal. But prior to that, it can be much more dangerous and you need to learn to uh, deal with radioactive materials, have the proper protective clothing, proper protective gloves, uh, masks, goggles, um, when you're trying to filter water. So the concept of this is if there is an above ground water source that has taken fallout from a nuclear detonation, that water needs to be treated before you drink it. You can drink it immediately after a detonation if it's filtered properly. If not, it has to be left sitting out so that that radiation will take time to dissipate. And that way you can utilize that water more safely. But in, in my opinion, um, it doesn't matter radio, radioactive material or not. Water is uh, contaminated anyway. You've got cryptosporidium, you've got giardia. Uh, this filter system in here will filter out a lot of that. Um, you can also get the backpacker type pump systems that are guaranteed to filter out that type of water. Um, but we are uh, really big on teaching classes on how to store water, where to get it, how to treat it, how to filter it, how to just basically do everything you need to know with water. Our website has our water video on it. I highly recommend you go there and take a look at that. Um, it's on the ycpt.org website and you go to uh, books and videos, click on the video section. There should be a video there um, of our water class. And it's one thing that we always profess that regardless of what you do in your preparations, whether it's a natural or a man-made disaster, in this case, we're prepping for nuclear war, uh, definitely a man-made disaster, uh, the water is gonna be the most critical thing that can be addressed in any type of disaster. Everybody likes to think, oh, we gotta have food stored first. No, you can go two weeks without food. You're not gonna last more than three days without water. And if it's contaminated water with radiation, um, you're gonna be in big trouble. So that's gotta be addressed first. So this is one system that's easy to do. Uh, you can also spend a lot more money and, uh, and I'll go ahead and spill the beans on one more. The Big Berkey system with the added filters on it um, will also take out 99.99% of cesium out of water. So if you already have a Big Berkey, yes, they're very expensive. They're stainless steel. They're bulky. They're very nice to have, but you have a good filtration system that'll filter out the cesium-134, which is the primary concern. Uh, these filters are guaranteed to filter out all of that stuff, radon uh, and different chemicals. Uh, it'll take out lead and arsenic and all that sort of thing. But uh, what we recommend you guys do is really focus on getting your filtration systems done now. Don't wait until the last minute. Um, this is something that is a major priority. Have your water storage. You need to have bottled water stored, one gallon bottled waters uh, for an emergency so that you have time to think to get your preps together after a disaster. You've got enough water there sitting that you can get through a week without having to even worry about touching your water barrels or getting out a water filter. Um, so definitely store bottled water. Uh, the blue water barrels, um, store those on your property. Don't store them on the cement. If you're gonna set them in your garage on cement, make sure you put down a piece of plywood um, so that you don't contaminate the water. Concrete reacts with the water. I really don't remember the exact uh, system of what happens with it, but you don't want to set a water barrel on concrete. So um, basically put a piece of plywood down and you're good to go. So store 55 gallon drums or 30 gallon drums, have some dispensers, five, six gallon uh, jugs with a dispenser on it you can use in the house. Keep in mind they're very heavy. Um, water weighs approximately eight pounds per gallon. So if you have a five gallon uh, container or a six gallon, you're already at 40 pounds or 48 pounds without the weight of the container. So when that's down on the ground, picking that up and getting it up onto a countertop is not real easy for some people. So they do make smaller ones. So that's it, basically. Uh, that's our recommendation. We wanted to show you how this works. So if you've already purchased one of these type of filter systems, um, you see what it looks like and how to do it. Um, 
I guarantee you there's probably somebody on YouTube that's gone through the whole phase of showing you how to drill it and all of that. Uh, one other thing we did do, it's very difficult to see, but up here we have a 1 16th inch hole. That's an air vent. That's all that is. If we were to seal this lid on top, which I don't recommend you do, just set it on there. But with that hole, that allows air to vent in and it helps better uh, to go into the lower bucket. So there you have it, folks. Uh, if you have any questions on it, uh, feel free to contact us. Send us an email to the Avapai County Preparedness Team. Uh, dot org website or go through our email at yavapicpt uh, at gmail.com and that'll go direct to us and you can always use the original one which is ycoathkeepers at gmail.com and we'll get right back to you if you have any questions or where to get it or how much they cost um, so look into that all right guys that's it thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video